Hello everyone, my name is Jack Fincham and most of you will know me from Love Island as the dad bod extraordinaire, that's how I roll. Back again on my podcast, Steve Sully Study at Woodbury House. Got a wicked guest in front of me, aka the Jack Finchy, Fincham. Finchy. Bloody great rep. Winner of Love Island, season four. We are going to be talking Best about. Time, in my opinion. Probably. Probably. Uh, we are going to be talking about, clearly, Love Island. Yes. Boxing. Yes. Little bit of office, little bit of Brent. Yeah. And a whole heap yeah. of other stuff. So yeah. where should we start? Yeah. Uh, listen, you're the host. You're the host. I could take over because, you know, don't think of me of you, uh, as your boss. Yeah? More of an entertainer. Uh, you know, entertainer third. Entertainer third. Okay. But, um, yeah, go on. Listen, look, you, you're the host. Ask, ask away. I'm an, I'm, an, I'm an open book today. Cool. All I'm right, I appreciate book. it. I'm an open book today. On a serious note, I absolutely am humbled that you said yes to coming on board Thank and you, I really, man. really appreciate no, it. Nice man. one, bro. Thank you. No problem. So, um, one thing I'm always intrigued about is let's just say like I'm gonna you know take this the right way. Yeah. You're you're a normal, genuine, good guy. Yeah. But when you go from like let's say the typical nine to five kind of job or a typical life, and mm. then you go into something like Love Island, how how it's a bit of a weird question, but how are you prepared for that? Ah, uh, listen. To, to tell you the truth, there's no there's no preparation. There's no preparation. Like so. I remember, so what was it, three years, three, four years ago now. No, my coming up coming up four years, four years ago. And it's nothing's changed with like the when you hop out and people ask for photos and stuff like that, which I, I love doing. It's, it's nice. Um but they don't prepare you. So you you land back from Mallorca and you hit round the corner. We landed yeah. in Stanford Airport, right? And uh, I remember the, the producer saying to us, uh, he went, Mike, listen, he said, there's a lot of people, a lot of people behind there. They, they all come to see you because you don't realise you're in there, right? And you're in this bubble and it's, it's perfect and you're not worrying about, you know, bills or just just every day. Like, a little bit closer. Just, 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 just every day. Yeah. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like fucking... You're just going through the motions. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you just live every moment as it's there. Yeah. Uh, you go out there and I swear to God, Steve, mate... There was thousands of people, mate. Paparazzi falling over each other, trying to take photos. It was mental. And then from and is it a good feeling or is it a bit overwhelming? It, it, was, it was overwhelming for me because I, as in I, anxiety type, type. anxiety. Because yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd always suffer from anxiety anyway. But it kind of went away when I was in there because I, you just forget. You just forget. You like, like you're just being on holiday. Yeah. And it was the most amazing experience of my whole entire life. And um. You're not prepared for the like. You, you, I couldn't, for example, just go up to my local Asda or, or Tesco and things like that because you just you just got all blue. Or you can't get away. People just follow you and that. And I'm not the sort of person to be like, I'll oh, go away. Like I'm standing there taking photos. I remember, I remember once right, I made the mistake. I've been home for a week and I went blue water to get some shopping, and I was stuck on the elevator, right, taking photos with his with his kids, mate. And there was and then a, a queue formed. And you think to yourself, how is his show that big? You, you, just, do, you just do, you just do not realize. I think, and I think, coupled with the World Cup, everyone it was it was like a summer to remember. So that's yeah. why now it's still kind of the the, the, the the same. Yeah. But in terms of preparation, you you don't, you don't get any. And the way I, the way I describe it to people is think of it this way: you're never actually out on your own. So if I go out for Sam Street on my own, I'm not on my own. I'm there's someone there, like, and, they, and they, you're eating. They're going out. They're waiting. They're waiting. Yeah, their phone, yeah. With their phone, like, and it, it and for me, it, it, there was there was points like when I low points and, and whatnot that I was just, I was just a paranoid wreck. I had, I look, fucking, like, can't even pick 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 your nose in in, in traffic lights. Case someone like videos here because you yeah. always get like sort of van or drive past like, that, hey, like and, yeah. all these, and all that bollocks, but um. Yeah, there's, there's no preparation to it. You just got to kind of get on with it. But you, you do you do get used to it. You do you do fall into it, and 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 then when the work comes in, 
it's like they don't tell you how to manage your money because you, you, you're, I'm, you're, I'm talking, you're getting these brand deals, you're getting, you know, this TV work, all this stuff, and it's, but it's like super, super, super money. Mm. And something happened to me really bad at the start. Like, I could say I blame what well, I half blame myself, right? You know, a, a friend of mine, he, he had all, all, all his best interests at heart. Um, signed me with, with an agent that was his, his, his girlfriend's agent. Um, but I'd never even met this geezer, right? Mm. So I signed a bit of paper. And uh, as I come out, realised, actually, I don't really want to work with this fella. I didn't realise there would be so many options to have agents. And I didn't, I didn't understand this stuff because, to tell you the truth, with Love Island, I didn't actually go to the first two auditions. I thought, I looked at the derby and I went, nah, ain't for me. Yeah, you know, ain't for me. Um and then I ended up fucking getting stung for like, like 100 grand, like at the start of it. So I was playing catch up from the, from the beginning. But then this money's constantly coming in and my personality, that having time and money on your hands is a bad, bad mix, a bad mix. And it put me over the last three years or sort of just I uh, spiralled out of control. And I'm just now pulling myself back together. If that makes sense. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's a, there's a so the the birth because you asked me earlier outside of when we was having a coffee like the, the kind of um, my podcast how it started etc. The Stephen Sully study and I've said this a few times on, on episodes is filling my own void. So when I was when I was a kid, there was no such thing as social media. There was mm. no real thing of really no. using the internet. And I had no clue what I wanted to do when I came out of work. I was going to go into the army. My mum and dad uh, taught me out of it because they said I was going to get killed. Then I end up doing a job that they wanted me to do. Yeah. Are you shooting everyone? Um, (laughs) Send Steve out. Send Steve out. Send him over there. Oh, he's asleep again. Rubbish. Um, But anyway, so I end up doing a job they wanted me to do, which is plumbing. I resented it. And I've done a podcast episode before, which is have your own plan or you find yourself becoming someone else's plan. Mm. And I honestly do believe in that. I do. Anyway, so um, I end up going into into sales, and I've actually lost my train of thought here. What we were talking about? What was we talking about? Uh, first of all, we were talking about. Oh yeah, Stephen Sully. You, you, so you triggered so, loads of so, points. You triggered loads yeah, of points. Yeah. My main mind. I wanted to to, to, to touch on. But go on, carry so, on. So anyway, I, I've gone into sales, and when when I'm filling your own void, yeah. When I'm when I'm sort of getting going through sales and then setting up my own companies, etc. I thought back. I thought. If I can inspire a young kid, female, male, whatever, and he's coming through school and he doesn't know what he wants to do, he knows he doesn't want to go to university, doesn't want to get his A-levels, doesn't want to go down the conventional route, but wants to do something slightly different. Mm. I'm, I'm interviewing people like you, athletes, entrepreneurs, go-getters, people that are out in the public domain mm. where they can listen to a conversation and say, okay, that person's inspired me. They've given me a bit of motivation, mm. education, and now I'm going to go down this path. What you said about Love Island is quite interesting because this is my comparison. And I don't know if it's right, and I don't know if it's a fair comparison, but this is my observation of it. Mm. It's a bit like when people used to say entrepreneurs or business owners, millionaires versus people that win, let's say the lottery. Mm. People that win the lottery nine times out of 10 are not prepared for that amount of kind of money sometimes. Correct. correct. And sometimes when they win it, after a couple of years, they end up losing it. Yeah. But with an entrepreneur, they've gone through the hardship, they've gone through the lessons, they've gone through all this stuff. And then when they get there, they kind of, they kind of almost kind of prepare for it. And the equivalent I was going to give is someone like, um, let's say boxing, right? Mm. Uh, Harlem Eubank is now becoming kind of like really successful uh, mm. as a fighter. Yeah, he's not at the same, le- he's not the same sort of level as AJ, but yeah. once he gets there, he's gone, he's kind of gone through the ranks and the, and the fame is increasing every time. But in your scenario, it was like, Jack Fincham, the normal guy, bang into superstardom. Yeah. And, and it's almost yeah. like it's like I ain't gonna lie to you. I feel like I feel like Justin Bieber at that airport. It must it must have been an amazing feeling, but again, like how do you prepare for it? Because some people can go cr- crazy, some people can relish it, mm. some people can turn, you know, it, it can just t- you know turn them into someone that that, that that they're not. And do you think there should be a bit more help by this TV program? Hundred a hundred percent think there should be more guidance they should say listen you're gonna earn this amount of money invest it save it do something with it because with me if i like i've got really 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 bad adhd like so it, it's, it's a bad it's, a, it's bad i can't concentrate on on anything my memory spans 
fucked and I'm very similar someone tells me saying like and it's, it's, it's awful it's awful and you meet so many people so many people but without if I don't have a structure right so before I was earning, earning good money doing sales I was earning I was happy I was happy um you do Man. strike me though as a natural born salesperson. Yeah, I, and I love you got it. You've got that charm, you've yeah, got the energy, yeah, yeah. you're certain, you're confident. Yeah, and I love it. And it's like, I, I had a structure there. I knew that, listen, if I went out on a Wednesday, right, I didn't get out, turn, turn up Thursday, yeah, you get a bit of a bollocking or whatever, but the structure's still there. You're back on your Thursday, you're back on it, you're back on your meetings, you're back, you there, yeah. When it was, I was huge, when I was huge. There was no backlash. If I wanted to go out and do something, and I didn't want to turn up the next day, then I wouldn't. And that's the wrong. It was the wrong attitude because there was no. There was no structure. So I had all this time, all this money on my hands, and I just, I just, I, I, I wouldn't say fucked it, but put it this way: without that structure, I fell to bits. I fell to bits, and I just like well, I was depressed. I, I, you know. And this, this is this is this is this is, this is only, only over the last year where like, the money started running out and the uh, work's drying up because of the bad headlines. I'm not listen. I'm not a bad person. I'm not a bad person. But sometimes good people can do bad things, and unfortunately, the press and people that read the press believe what they read. And I, I'd say, and this is being generous, thirty percent of it's true. You know. So that messed me up. So I lost a lot of work, you know, just through doing silly, silly things. And all of a sudden the phone stops ringing. And then, and then and that, over the last six months, I'm in panic mode now. I'm going, oh, fuck, what do I do? What do I do? So I'm now taking it into my own hands. I've just filmed the little TV show, just just done. So the, the, the work's still there. People still, people still want to work with me. But I, 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 I feel like in myself, I've got to build up trust in myself to know that I'm going to turn up on time, know that I'm going to do this and and prove to these brands that, that, that they want to work with me. Yeah, mm. so that's why I've gone back to my roots and I'm, I'm set, I've am i set up a, an office supply and a stationery company. We do like obviously furniture, print, all that kind of stuff. I know they dumbed it down and Love Island just said I sold pens. I thought, cheeky bastards. Mm. Um, so I've set up a company there. So that way I know that I've got to get up Monday to Friday and I've got to... I've got a structure there. It's in place. Yeah. I've got. I've got to do it. And um, and if I if I get the TV work on the side, I can. It doesn't matter. There's there's no basic wage. We're we're fifty fifty on our profits, so I can then go do that and then do that and do that and do that. Yeah. And then eventually the trust comes back. And when you when you're focused on something, especially because especially about ADHD, like you if you're hyper focused on something, you hyper focus on it, and you mm. just that's all you want to do. Yeah, that's all you want to do. But um, but uh, for me, and I have, I hit, I've hit rock bottom, yeah. And I think I had to. I had to. Can, and can I interject? Go on. Describe what rock bottom is to rock you. Rock bottom to me was not earning the money I was earning, and just feeling like at points I didn't even want to be here. Like this is I've never said this before. Like Christmas time, man. I took an overdose, man. I was ready to go. Didn't want to be here. Did not oh, want to be it, mate. like, and then I just, yeah, I, it's upsetting to think. And then like, and then March, the, my, my nan passed away, and that really affected me. And then, and, and for that year, that so it's been a, so last March, so it's been like a year and a half. That year and a half has just been like, mate, it's been a, just a downward spiral, mate. Watching the money go like down, down, and down, and down, and down. Watching the work go down, and down, and down. More and more time to be in your own head, and more and more time to think, what am I? What is my purpose? Like, you know, reading people's stupid hate comments on Instagram. When back in the day, I never give a shit. I was like, I ain't gonna fuck, mate. I've got fucking X amount in the bank, mate. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Why do I care what you think? Now I'm starting to care what they think. And it was like, I felt like I had to hit this point to go because there's no other way. And that's a cliche, but there's no other way <laughs> apart from up from upwards. And I'm and it's happening. And now I'm putting myself around the right people, like people that I want to be like and people that can put me in touch with the right people to make what I want to happen happen, to make to build this successful company, to build this successful TV career again and to build working with these good brands I used to work with, like top brands. I mean, I've worked with like McDonald's, Lucasaid, like I'm talking like top, top brands, you know? 
and fe- I've done, done feeler campaigns, you know, like yeah. all all that stuff. Like it, it's gonna it's gonna come back, but until I sort myself out, it it won't it won't happen. So that's why now I'm I've turned over a new leaf and I'm just changing myself and I'm and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Like there's there's no I, I will not fail. I weren't born to to be a failure like I weren't born and like it's even with the boxing like the boxing for me was so important like I went and got my pro license training with in my opinion the best trainer in the country got a bit much going to and from Harlow twice a day from where I live like <coughs> it's, a, it's a fair slap like hour and a mm. half there and hour and a half back and I had no other life so I've gone back to my old trainer who trained me from when I was like 14 and I'm going to have my pro debut. It's going to be on Sky Sports. And I'm going to go out to every single person that said, you weren't going to... Because I think a lot of people think, ah, boxing, he won't do that. He won't do that. And it's happened with a lot of things. And they've been right. They've been they've been right. And I was such a... I, I was such a... Uh, a good, good at playing the victim card. Like, oh, well, this is my excuse. I didn't have no excuses. It's because it was me. I didn't want to put the work in. I didn't, I didn't care. I, I thought, I thought the money weren't going to run out. I thought, I thought I was just going to be fine. But at the end of the day, you've got you have to work for things, and that's what I'm willing to do now. And I and I am doing, like you know, I'm too fucking good to to. I'm I'm not, I'm not going to commit suicide, mate. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Like, like I get upset thinking about it, and like. And, you know, and I was using that excuse, you know, I lost my nan. Like, my nan was my best mate, like, honestly. Like, I told her more than I've ever told my mum. I told her everything. Like, I'm talking everything. Like, and then she always made me feel better. And it was like, when, when that went away, I felt like I had something just taken from, like, a rug pulled from underneath me. And I was just stuck in just shit. And, and I just didn't, and I didn't care. As cliche as this may sound, it's obvious it may sound, sometimes, because I had my nan pass away this year, in actual fact, my uncle and then her son, my nan, all passed away within two or three weeks uh, of each other, and I had to go to the same funeral place, and I was like, oh, my God, it it really proves how delicate and how quick life goes, Mm. and sometimes when you lose someone that close to you, it actually gives you a kick up your own backside and think, right, now now I need to crack on. Yeah, yeah. Did that happen to you? At the start, I went... It started out me going, I don't care. I'm going to just go out. I'm going to take drugs. I'm going to do this. I'm going to... Bit resentful and a bit bitter towards life. Bit bitter towards life. I thought, and, I, oh, man, and, I remember, and I remember I used to sit there and I just think, if I don't wake up, I don't care. I don't care if I don't wake up. Right. And I, you know, and I had a lot of struggles with addiction from that time because I was doing these things so much to just escape reality. I didn't want, I didn't want to be in reality. I didn't want to have to think about my now. I didn't want to think about work dwindling. I didn't want to think about bills I've got to pay. I, I just didn't want to think about it. So I thought to myself, if I don't wake up this, this, this tomorrow, I'm happy. I've done it. And I used to say to myself, you, you've traveled, you've traveled the world. You've traveled well. You've done this, you've done that. And then there's just something over the about last six months, I just thought, what would my nan say if you was doing that? You fuck, she'd go, you little fucking bastard. She'd go, what are you doing? She was like, she'd go, she'd go, get on with it. Like, get on with it. Make me proud. Like, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. Like, I'm, t- I'm, I'm in the, the, the middle of turning my life around. Mm. Like, and that is what, and it's refreshing because I thought I'd be so sad when I see, you know, that, that bank balance gone and that, and that, you know, all these friends that you thought were your mates, they're not there anymore. Like, but, they're not there anymore. The ones that the day ones, they're still there. Of course they are. I thought I'd be sad, but I'm not. I'm just like I feel like I've had a, I've been given a second chance now. But it's up. But this time it really is up to me. And this time there ain't no room for for messing it up. There ain't no room for it. It's got to happen. But when when you went into Love Island and you won it, first of all, the question is, did you believe you were going to win it? Do you know what? <laughs> this is going to sound mental. So. I, I believe in the law of attraction like massively, yeah. So I know it works. This is why I'm a lazy bastard because I've not been doing it. I used to, I sat, when I first got convinced by everyone just to go to the audition, right? Went to the audition. That day, they rang me up and said, the executives of the show want to see you. Can you come back? So I went back and I was in the, also I was in the starting lineup. What? Wow. So for two months, I used to sit there, just imagine, think, 
I've won. Oh, I can't believe I won. I won. Saying it, saying I've won it. I should write out a bit of paper. Jack Finch and won Love Island 2018. Affirmation. And, and yeah. When they when when my company done a congratulations, I opened up the card, and it was the bit of that dad found the bit of paper. It must have been in my drawer or something. And they said, and they should you write underneath it, and you did. And I was like, oh my god, like. So I know it works. I've just got to, I've got to get myself in that mind frame again, which I am. And and things I'm doing now, and things I'm I'm saying, and and the way I'm betraying myself, and the way I'm at, I'm acting, and the way I'm carrying myself, they are. It's coming. It's coming. It's it's, it's happening. Yeah. Like the boxing. I won't listen. I, everything, everything happens for a reason. The reason I didn't box that time was because I was right. Fair enough. I got myself in shape. I got fit. I could. I probably would have won. I know I would have won, but I was still sneakily going out and drinking on the weekends. You can't do that. You either do it 100% or you don't do it. Yeah. So this time around with the boxing, I'm going back to my old trainer. I'm going to do it completely right and I'm going to win and, and, and prove a lot of people wrong because I think a lot of people think I'm just like a... A lot of people don't even know that I boxed, like... Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I remember well, when I'd done my first... When I first met you and uh, you said you were boxing, I had heard that you were, you know, you'd done a bit of boxing before, yeah. but when you were doing a little bit of shadow boxing, I thought, he can actually box. Yeah, no, like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Some, yeah, some yeah, people yeah. throw their hands it around like it, like, yeah, and, and you're like, they're, they're no one. What are you but, doing? but you've got all, you've got everything there. And yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, this guy can fight. Yeah. You know? So um, why is it important for you to get back into the boxing ring? Because room? It's, it's, re it's really, really important for me because it keeps me on a straight and narrow... It gives me, you know, your your train is your mentor. Like you can't if I if I say I'm gonna be there at six in the morning, and I ain't there, mate. I'm banging trouble. I have to be there, and I and I will be there. Yeah, like, and I will be there. And that was another thing as well. Like back, you know, two three years ago, I wasn't accountable for nothing. So if I fucked up or I didn't do didn't do something, no one would tell me off. If it did tell me, I'm like, I'll tell them to fuck off. Cause I wasn't be I was it wasn't myself. Like I'm I'm so, I'm really soft and I'm, I'm actually really shy, but people don't know that. So that's why I used <laughs> to find that like getting drunk, doing, doing um, uh, you know, and going to pies and stuff. That, that made me feel like that was the only way that I could show my funny side and people thought I was cool. Like, but when I when I when I get to know people, I am naturally funny. I am I do have a laugh and I, and I, I am a, a soft, kind person. And I just want people to, people to see that again, but um, yeah, a lot, just just a lot of stuff that in in personal life ha had happened, and the boxing is is just so important to me because I I, I need it, I need that structure again. Mm. It's structure, like it began to work nine to five as business jack, training after work, what I used to do, and I was happy as Larry, mm. happy as Larry, mate. The most, like I, I used to sit there. At my desk and I used to have these pictures of all these watches, yeah, all these like jewelry watches, all this stuff. I've bought them all. Every watch under the sun I've bought, I've had. But when I got it, I went nice for five minutes. I don't and it want it. Off. I don't yeah. want it. I didn't. I don't. I don't wear a watch anymore. Like I just, mm. it's, it's not. It, it doesn't interest me anymore. All I'm interested in is being. And people, people say they want to find happiness. I don't. I don't think happiness is a thing. I think it's just being content, being content in 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 yourself and and. You know, happiness comes in bursts, don't it? Does. it? You know, but being considered like you might have had a bad day, but you go home to your nice house that you've bought that you worked hard for, you're then content. <coughs> you don't go in your house every time and go, Oh my god, I'm so happy that I'm in my house. Like yeah. it doesn't work like that. Yeah. It's like it I think just finding contentment is 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 what I want. And also finding a purpose, because I hate that question people say to me. What would what what what, what are you up? when when people say what are you up to these days? I don't know what to say to them sometimes. It's embarrassing. Mm. The phone it rang in six weeks. I ain't done nothing, mm. you know. But the what? Listen, the work will come back in. It will. I I, I I strongly believe that. Or when people say, well, where do you want to be in five years? I think I don't know. I don't know what I want to do in five years. I don't know what I want to be. I don't know who I am. I, I'm I'm kind of lost at the minute. I'm You're like reinventing yourself. Yeah, I'm reinventing myself. I'm I'm finding myself and I'm finding what I want to do. But I know boxing is definitely going to be a part of that. Um, How far do you want to take the boxing? I want the Southern area title would be a dream for me. British? Mm, uh, How heavy are you? I'll, championship weight, I'll probably do, do super middle. Okay. Dry out. That's, and, a, that's a tough I'll dry tough out. Tough category to be in. Though. So it might even be light heavy because at the minute I'm, I'm, I'm an heavyweight at the minute. <laughs> but um, yeah, just, just, just it, that, that, that's just important to me. 
but the whole thing boils down to having a structure because if I ain't got a structure, 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 I fall, I fall to pieces. I just fall to pieces, and all I want to do is just drink and take drugs and fucking do things that I wouldn't normally do. It's just escape reality, mm. you know. And like I said, the main point I want to get across is like, doesn't make me a bad person. It's like good people just do bad things, and and it can, and it's a, and 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 an addiction is yeah. is a struggle. It is it's hard. It, like and it ain't just you involved. Your whole family's involved. It really can ruin people's lives. And for me now, I know now it's life or death, mate. It's life mm. or death. You either, you either knock all that in the head and knuckle down. Listen, I'm not saying that I'm, you, people, people are, uh, that I'm going to be clean for 50 years. I'm not, you know, I'm not, not the Pope. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But like... Time I, and a place. Uh, there's times time and times and places for, for everything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But as it lays, I'm I'm reinventing myself and, and I want to prove a lot of people... Right, because a lot of people believed in me, and I let them down, and I want them to to prove them right and say, "I told you, you come through. I told you, you come good." Yeah, and prove myself right as well. Yeah, the other sort of element of let's say um, going into something like Love Island, becoming famous, um, being in the tabloids for good and maybe not so good reasons. There's the other element where people don't train you, and I'm I, I love this psychology, mm. which is. They don't train you, prepare you from when you when you're on social media and and have a large following. So you got like 1.9 million followers mm. on Instagram across all the other platforms. We're talking about probably two or three million people following you. Yeah, what's that like day to day? Because you can't really get away from it unless you come off social media. Do you yeah. get do you get positive feedback all the time? Negative feedback? What's your take on social media? So if I could, I'd delete. If I could, I'd delete um, Instagram tomorrow. Poison. People just say say nasty things, and you might get a thousand comments, but you read that one comment that says you're fat and you're you're this and you're rubbish, and that's the only one you focus on all day. Like that's that's my personality. It might be all, all off someone's back, all off duck's back for some people, but for me, it sticks in my head. But obviously, I need need it for work. But when you were flying, as in like you know, just come out, loads of money, yeah. everyone loved you. You're probably a bit more resilient. Yeah, be it hundred percent. But when when it things you down, but when you down. when things get a bit tough, then mm. you feel more exposed to the small little comments. Hunt, that, that's you've hit the nail on the head. It's exactly what it is. And I just, I don't get these people. Like I wouldn't dream of saying something to someone I don't know. It's not very nice. I wouldn't dream of it. It doesn't enter my head. So I had like, the same conversation. So I don't get these people. I don't, I don't. I had the same conversation with Lewis Burton who come onto the podcast, I think back in the last year. And, uh, you know, he's got a good following. He's verified on yeah. Instagram. And I'm like, because I, I see myself in the future. I want to grow this podcast. I want to yeah, be yeah. the best and of what I can be. You know, I want to take the spot of Joe Rogan and all these other bigger yeah. people in the future. And I believe I can get there. But I'm also preparing for the negative comeback because when you've got hundreds of thousands of followers or millions, yeah. they're going to be some arseholes out there. Right, you, you, you can't argue, you can't argue with all these people. Yeah. Sometimes I sit there, right, someone will write something so idiotic, right, I have to reply, but you, you can't argue with these people. Like, I'll give you an example once. I remember was I was on a train. I was just having a little bicker with my brother and uh, someone got involved and went, <laughs> no wonder Danny left you. And I turned around and I said, who are you talking to? I said, no, do you? I'm talking to my brother. And she went, well, don't go on a show then and put yourself out there. And in a way, in a way I thought, good point. Like, it's hard. <laughs> thank it, you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. But it, it's, so it's hard because people, they, they, people, <coughs> people think they've got a right to say things to you right, when they've seen you. Because on, you're in the public domain. Yeah, and you're not in your, you're not, you know, you're not Killian Murphy. You're not playing a character on Peaky Blinders. You're being you. So they're, they're judging you as, as you or what they think's you. But one another thing I will say is no real such thing as reality TV unless it's a documentary. It all has to be done, camera shots and things like that. Slightly staged. It's, it's slightly staged. It's all real conversations. But, you know, me and you might have a conversation here, but... Oh, we didn't get that on that camera. Do you mind having that conversation again over there? But then some other stuff might pop up. So the real conversations, but it's 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 placed is the word I'm looking for. Okay. But um Yeah, I lost my lost my child of thought then. So but like but so yeah, you, you got like one point nine million followers. Yeah. Um I mean, you know, 
I don't get this and hopefully in the future I will. I want to ha- have that good problem. But when you wake up, there's going to be a flood of messages in your DMs. Yeah. What kind of I, things you see in there? I don't, I don't look at them because it's like, it's mad. Because I mean, they, a lot of them go into requests. So people that I speak to goes into the normal one. But I don't even reply to them because it's still fucking like hundreds and hundreds of them. But um, so like, I'll go on to like requests now. Right, so let's go on requests. This will be so funny. Um, just look. Just in there. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. It just says beautiful. I saw you a couple of weeks ago driving past Bunkers Hill. It's just like you're con- you're constantly being watched. It's like it's like a bit creepy. Um, uh, because that never someone, goes. And someone just look had to go up my outfit. Look, it's like, this is today. Boots, and, boots <coughs> and denim. No rules. I thought the, I thought that looked alright. Nice pair of Chelsea boots and a pair of jeans. Mate, you're, right. you're looking swell. Do you know what I mean? It's like. Like you, and 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 I, I've come to realise now you can't argue with all these with, with all with all these people. So now I just think, do you know what? Think what you want, yeah. honestly, because I can't be asked to the, get into it. There, there, there is the other good side of social media, which is of course we've I've spoke spreads to, good messages. Yeah, and also like um, I, I know it's going to sound cliche, but you got to use social media, not let social media use you. And I think for business. Like nearly two million followers. Mm. I mean, surely there could be some really good endorsements there that you can, and yeah, you can yeah. brand alignment and stuff like that. Yeah. Talk to me about some of that stuff. The, the business side of it. The, the business side of it. I earn. I earn a lot of money through the business side of it. I actually started out. I did have two point six million. Can I ask? Like when you say good money, what we're we talking about? <sighs> Too much, baby. How much do you get? So it depends what it is. Like yeah. if it's just a, a post, um, it can be. It can be. It's thousands in the thousands, right? And if it's like a little video, like it can be double figure thousands. Do you know what I mean? Not now. I've lost a lot. And I've lost a lot through my own just, I ain't changed as a person, but just negative headlines and, <coughs> and things like that. But, you know, they'll, they'll come back or whatever. And it's like, I just, I want, I, I, I want people, because it's, it's hard. It's like, how do I explain this? So, People see a version of you, didn't they, on social media and on TV. I want people, I'm now open. I never would talk about like all this stuff. I was so like, I don't want anyone else to, to find out that I've been out, that I've done this or I've done that or I've done that. No, it's like, if you, do, if you find out, you find out. You've got, you've got to take the rough of this move. Like people do it all the time. So it's like people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Half these journalists that write these things about these people, they're, they're doing worse. Trust me, I know they're doing worse. So... I think they need to, to ease off a, ease off a little bit when it comes to like um, stories that people write and things like that, or criticizing you for something silly like you know my dog Elvis, like he's not my best mate, like he's got his ears cropped. Look, I, I, I rescued him off off of a off of a, a geezer that, that that said, "Would you want him as a gift?" Yeah, of course I do. Of course, I would. I'm not going to give a dog a home. I've got five. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, when I got the bulldog. <laughs> can't really gone to a puppy farm it was a present from my mate i didn't buy it and i've read the other three are rescues and on there now i put a picture of him up last night and the amount of times i've explained it i don't explain it anymore all guy one of them called me a twat this morning for cutting his ears like i'm a butcher do you know what i mean it's like you just so i, I you just can't argue just can't argue with it so now yeah. and also as well where i'm just still myself and never changed People don't want to see certain things on Instagram, like so they want to see like the celebrity lifestyle and how cool it is and all that. But really, I'm not really doing much. So I'm just posting up me and my mates. Nobody wants to see me and my mates. And that's how the followers that started going down, you know. And I've been told by my management a few times, you start using it as a business, which I am going to start doing. I'm going to start my own private Instagram account and just use that for business. Do you know what I mean? Give people what they want to see. So I'd forget. I'd be at a festival or something, going, "Wee, who the." F- to see that I don't mm-hmm. want to see it do you know yeah. what I mean so um, I'm going to start using that for business and then start with like a little private one and I just have to, to have a laugh with my mates on you can be on it nice one. Um, thank but, you very much uh, yeah it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny one social media because it can do so much good it can do so much good but it can also um, 
it can I mean you gotta think about them them I can't call them memes, you know what I'm saying? It takes a piss out of me. Memes. Memes. Yeah. Um everyone went like, you know, say someone someone gets done with one, it can ruin their life. It's funny. <laughs> I've laughed at them, but like that that poor bastard is gonna go. Oh my god, yeah, the geezer just on that memo thing. Oh well, uh, Anthony Joshua sadly uh, lost on the weekend against Usyk, and I think that yeah. was a great fight. And yeah. uh, he just come up short on that night. Mm. But the amount of memes that came out minutes after—I mean, people must minutes. be sitting there by the Wait, computer oh, mate, waiting, waiting, waiting for their, for their waiting downfall. For <laughs> Got to admit, some of them are very funny. But if he, someone was like, "Oh yeah, they're clever." <laughs> Very clever. But if someone was like a little bit sort of exposed with their mindset at that present point in time, it could send them into depression. 100%. 100%. Like anything, like, like a post of, that someone puts up about you oh, can be... Can, can, can I ask this then? What is, and I don't want to bring up like old feelings, but what's the worst headline or worst comment that you've ever received? Oh God, let me think. Um... I've had, I mean, do you know what? I've just had a lot of people, like things that I enjoy, like, you know, the boxing and I love animals, you know, my nature and stuff like that. People would have comment on, on that and go like, you're fucking useless, you're shit, you're fat, you're just personal. Personal you're spiteful, fat, yeah. Like, um, you're uh, like, oh, your mum or your, or they said, they've said like, put a little picture pick, up, pick up my, my little sister who I, I adore. You know, like she's only thirteen. Obviously, I'll, I'll never tell her. But like, you know, they they will say comments about your family and things out, and it, and it, mate, it gets to me. And I, all I want to do, mate, is got is just reply. I go I'll tell you what, come and meet me now. And say it to my face, and then I'll, and I'll put my head straight through it. Do you know what I mean? It makes me that angry. <coughs> so I've had so there's been some horrible things, but then again, you get some nice things and some supportive stuff, or you get the condescending ones where people write, "I'm not having a dig," but. And then they just they give you their life advice. Like, yeah. why am I going to listen to you? Let just let, let me live live my life. So it's like people always feel that like they they they've got a right. They've got a right to tell you how you should be doing something, why you should be doing something, and what's right and what's wrong. When when that is that's completely wrong. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's um it's a funny old it's a funny old game, mate. Instagram and all that. I don't use Twitter. I've got it, but I don't use it. I ain't posting that for ages. That that place is poisonous, mate. No, there's nothing nice that goes on there. The amount of arguments I've had on there, but I'm having arguments with, over like I'm thinking, what? You, why? Why am yeah. I doing this? I'm I'm I'm, I'm just sitting there annoying myself like, for no reason. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I've had I've had some awful stuff, but then again. When I, I I was going through a, re, a really really bad time uh, a few a couple of months back, like really bad time, and I I felt like I had no one to talk to, like, and I just went on. I don't know why I done it. To be honest, sometimes I regret, it, sometimes I don't. But I thought I'd rather get out in the open, and um, I just let it all out. I just told everyone how I was feeling, and the, the support I got was overwhelming. Like I cried, I was crying, like I was physically sitting there crying my eyes out, like. Going, I can't believe that there's this many people do actually care. Like, and that, and it restores a bit of faith in humanity. So that gave me a kick up the arse to go right. I can't let all these people be so supportive and be, you know, so nice to me, and then go and do the same things again because it makes no sense. They're there for that's happened for a reason. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag, I yeah. say is the word. The um you gave advice about like, you know, your own advice, which is getting on back on the let's say back on the horse, so to speak. Yeah. Getting into routine. Yeah. Routine is the most important thing okay. ever. And what's your what's your perfect day to day routine? Talk me through a, a My, typical day of Jack. So, so so at the minute there's not much going on, but this as of next week, this will be my routine. Get up in the morning. 6 a.m. train boxing. 9 a.m. go to work. Maybe do a few meetings. About four o'clock, finish, go home, chill out. Train again about 6 30 or 7, 8, could be later. Maybe if you're sparring, whatever. Go home, go to sleep. Do that Monday to Friday, Saturday. Don't deprive, because what a lot of people do is deprive themselves like, and, and 
and don't do anything. You need you need to have a release. So, so if you go out on a on a Saturday, you go out to the pub and you have and you have you haven't necessarily got got a drink, but you're chilling out with your mates. Do it. Don't sit. You don't sit in your own head because what my mistake was is I was mum and I would be at work when I was living at home. You know, stepdad's at work. Oliver's in our beef farm. My brother. <coughs> all my mates are at work, I'm sitting in my own head. I'd make up scenarios that didn't even happen. And then I would come home and I'd be like, literally like rocking, like crying, just like, you've got, you've got to bring the doctor, you've got to bring the hospital, you've got to bring the hospital, like, and I, I, I need to be sectioned. She's going, what? Because I've sat there in my own head for so long in the day, like, because there's so much time and nothing to do, that I've made up a situation and wasn't even true. Like, and I was really unwell, really, really, really unwell, like, like, do you know what I mean? And like, and that's that. That was then it got bad, obviously around Christmas when obviously the overdose happened and all this, all this, all this stuff. And I think I need. I, 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 it's awful that it happened, but I needed it because now, like, I think it, it's a cliche. We I know we love that word, but like, what don't kill you makes you so much stronger, mate. Like, because now I think to myself, there's nothing you can say to me that someone ain't already said. There's nothing you can do to me that hasn't already happened. There's nothing you can, even like physically, that you can't hurt. You can't hurt me. You mm. can't. You got to kill me. You literally, like, you can't. Like, even if you steal from me, mate, I've been down to nothing. I've been down to nothing. I'll get it back. Yeah. So, I just. I'm just all about positivity now and just try. And what I do eventually want to do, I mean, at the minute, I'm not in a position to do that. I want to eventually start helping other people. I want to help help them with addiction, mental health. Um, Yeah, addiction addiction and mental health, because they they really do go hand in hand. I want to help young people with it, because people think, when you think of of an addict, right, it's not, it's a disease of the brain addiction. Like when when you, when you think, think of an addict, you think of like some geezer with a needle hanging out of his arm mm. in an archway, yeah, with a Costa cup. Do you know what I mean? Like, like a stereotypical kind of you know. Addict. That's not yeah. that's not what it is. So when I'm when I'm in a position, I'm re- recovered and I'm I'm and I'm like you know, um, in a really really good place and I'm and I've boxed and I'm presenting again back on Sky Sports with Boxer which is happening I actually spoke to him yesterday so I've been getting back on my presenting which I love I actually love my presenting um, then I want, I want to start helping people I, I think cause if you don't help other people you won't uh, if you if you help people it comes back tenfold of course it does yeah. it really does well, it's what you put out to the universe you get back 100% so that, that that's my that's my that sort of get myself back to I'd say I'm back, I'm back at about 70% now and then when I'm back at 100%, that's when I'm going to start opening a lot of people. Mm. And, and it will come back to me tenfold. And I know it will. Yeah. I, know, I know it will. That's good. What have you been doing recently then? Recently, I've just finished filming a little show for IT. Finished it a few days ago. Finished a film, a uh, little show for um, ITV2, which is fun. That was good. What was that? Uh, what was that called? Celebrity Dinner Date. Um, <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good show, that. Um been setting up the office supply and stationery company so um that's again giving the structure um so we do that you know print you know furniture pens obviously yeah um you know anything really signage um <laughs> office refurbs office cleans um not like fake a lot of people can get this recently a lot of fake plants in the office yeah it's quite cool um pretty much everything really Everything really. So I've been setting that company up, which will be going live very, very soon. In fact, I've got a business card in the next room. I'll uh, okay. hand one over. But I'll do it. you got to do it cool though. you got to go. There you go. There you go. Bell me if you need anything. 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 So yeah. that's, um, that's what I'll do. So um, yeah, so I've been setting that up and I've just been sitting there thinking of ideas really and just just like, what what do I, I want to do? And obviously, I, 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 I buried, my, buried my head in the sand for a long time, and um, in a re- like, like in a, just a terrible, dark, dark place. I buried my head in the sand. Didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't answer the phone. I just thought, oh god, life is over. I'd rather not be here. I would rather than feel like it is. I'd rather not be here. Then I've just slowly just picked yourself picked up. Picked myself go out, go out, start answering the phone again. Then go and have a little little walk with someone, and then eventually, 
you think, oh, I feel all right now. And yeah. then not 100%, but you feel, you feel better. So then um, I've been doing that, getting myself back up, back to fighting strength, you know. Uh, spoke to Boxer, you know, so I'm going to start doing presenting back on Sky Sports, which is sick. Um, then I'm going to get back in the ring and then watch. Once you start looking after your body, fit body, fit mind. Fit soul. Working hard, working out. Should we do your abs again? Uh, should we do your abs again? Yeah, the, oh. should, should, should we do your abs again? No, not now. Not, 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 not. No, you're all right, and you're showing up in front of the... Front of the... Front of the... Yeah. Well, against karate. Yeah. Against, well, he'd, come against, he'd come through that wall. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, just getting myself back fighting fit and that. And then, like, once once you start, like, doing positive stuff in areas that were shit, everything else just comes together. It's, it's the congruency. So I've I've got a, a wellness company called Mimboso, which stands for Mind, Body and Soul. Yeah. The soul, uh, our spin on souls, nutrition. And the app is designed for people to bet their life. So unlike Instagram, where Instagram wants to retain you on there, we don't say that to our consumers. We're saying to them, get on there for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, get the very, very best content and then implement it into your life. And I believe that if you can read the right things, be around the right people, have a positive outlook on life, train, exercise and eat the right food, you're never going to be perfect, but you're on the you're pursuing perfection. You pursuing perfection, yeah, because I, I I think there's no such thing as perfect. Like there there ain't, there just ain't, and there's no there's no point saying I'm perfect now. Like, well, it's a bit like going what you were saying before about some people who've got a big yeah. big follower on social media. They portray a bit of a fake or a bit of a yeah. pu- like they purport something on social yeah. media, and then a young kid. Let's say a, a young teenager, they look at that person and think, I want to be like that. And where they feel they can't get there, that's when it starts sending them into depression, yeah. anxiety and stuff. Well, look at, look at it this way. Look, people are posting the highlights of their life, the best bits of their life. Mm. Like, if you're having a really sh- shitty day, you ain't going to post and go, oh, I had a terrible day, didn't I? I'll stick that one up. <laughs> It's yeah. not going to happen, is it? No. So, like, you're looking at the, the the highlights of people's life. So, <coughs> a young kid, like you say, will read that or what read that or look at that and go, oh, "Why can't I be like him? Why can't I be?" And that sends them into depression. So, I think I think they should be more awareness on that. Somehow, somehow, I don't know how you do it, but somehow, yeah. Um, but lost my trail of thought because that geezer's eyes are stuck with a piercing blue. Mm. Richard Hamilton, only yeah. hard for you. It's a powerful one. Such a good, such a good painting. On, on that note, we got the 29th of October our I'm event to that. at the uh, the Hamyard Hotel, which yeah, we're, yeah. I'm doing a Q and A with Nima Labrizi, yeah. a very large. Um, Can I th- do a question? Go on. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to think it's no, <laughs> no, because I'm going to make you laugh up, up there, and it'd be funny for me. And we're going to have uh, Oren Jacobi, who is the Oscar-nominated director yeah. for the Shadow Man documentary. There, it's yeah. going to be an amazing event, and obviously, you're you're going to be. Attending. Are, you, are you going to be like motivational speaking? Just like, get out, yeah, get out. Yeah. If you don't want to make it, don't even cut it. That's why I wore this hat. I was going to throw it at Lauren. Go, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. Uh, uh, you don't find hills like that anymore. You can still find them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that, man. That'd be good. So there's only one more, one, one or two more things I want to ask you, Jack, because I mate. know you're a very, very busy man. I don't want to always come back to Love Island, but, yeah, of course. but that is the thing that kind of, you know, sort of, you know, it. You know it, it's kind of sort of catapulted you into like, you know, fame, success, mm. and all this other good stuff Mul- that you're doing. Multiple shows. Multiple successful entrepreneurs. Multiple shows, so... So. Not, not just one, not just, not just multiple. So. Yeah, like platinum, platinum, uh, yeah. platinum record. Uh, you yeah. know, music star. <laughs> been in a been in a film. What? <laughs> what film was you in? Nah, called, called the Last Highest comes out early next year. Big like, time, uh, big time. Tommy, yeah, big time. Diet, <laughs> big time. Um, all the characters, sorry, not the characters. All the individuals on that episode in season four all seem like actually like quite nice people. Genuinely nice people. Yeah, there's not, like, one, there's not one I didn't like. Do you know the 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 and romance? I would say, and I would say the romance between yeah. you and Danny. So yeah. that's Danny Dyer's daughter. Yeah. Was that a genuine one? Hundred percent, man. Like, listen, I put put it this way: like, you, I thought I love. Well, I did love her. Like, I did. I loved her. Like, I I loved her a lot. Like. <laughs> You're, but I suppose the way to describe it is 
you know, you're in, it's a holiday romance. You're you're set up in the the idyllic situation where all your cleaning's done, your bed's made for you in the morning. You, you just spent you spend all day together, just chilling in the sun and like your mates round jar and it's just amazing. It's hot and the weather and the tan and it's just it, there's nothing. It's paradise. So how if you fancy each other and you get on and you got that time to spend it with, with one another, how how can you not that not you not you're gonna fall in love? Yeah. But then you go out into the real world. Your phones are can't you get your phone back? You start having real life stresses. Oh, fucking let me put the bins out. Little tiny things start grating on you and I'll probably greater than her more, right? And there's a lot of things I regret. There's a lot of things I regret with Danny. Like she was she was beautiful and she was lovely and you Well know, if you could I turn was, back the hands of time, what would you change? I'd just change myself and be do you know what? And this is what I've been doing. I've been being more considerate. Like I could I, I could be quite selfish, like um, so if I could turn back the hands of time, I'd be less selfish and start taking other people's feelings into, into consideration more, more so than what I, I do. I mean, I always do. I always do. But sometimes I think people think I care more about animals than people, which is probably half true. But um, yeah, I'd be I'd be more considerate and, and actually think because in my head it'd be like I ain't doing nothing wrong. I'm going yeah. out. I'm going out. What's the matter? What's the matter? <laughs> but like, really, they want to spend time with you. How nice is that that someone wants to spend time with you? Lovely. And thing, now, yeah. now I'm on my own. Do you know what I mean? So, listen, you, I, I think if you go out looking for a relationship, like you, you go out thinking, oh, I really want to find me, me wife tonight, or me boyfriend tonight, it won't happen. Mm. You got to, it, it just can't, it happens naturally, I think. Yeah. Like, I've never, ever had a girlfriend that I've met through a, a platform or a social, uh, a social um, dating social app, whatever it is. Yeah, like a Tinder or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tin, Tinder. Yeah, Tinder. I've only ever been at someone I've met face to face. I think that's important because um, that's that's dying out a bit, isn't it? You know, it's meeting dying meet. out, man. Listen, and people talk about chat lines and all this, man. Just go up and say hello, and trust me, it'll just flow. And if if it's someone you've got a connection with, you'll you you'll, not, you'll have a conversation. Yeah, trust you'll me. feel it. Yeah, you'll just you'll just have a conversation. I've never, like, I've ne- yeah, I've never met someone I've thrown online. Like, don't get me wrong, I've DM girls and you DM girls, I've met them, whatever. But I know I'm not going to go out of them. But girlfriends, I've met actually having a genuine conversation with, met seeing them, hello, oh, you're all right. Like, just hello, like, that's it. Yeah. It's not hard. Um, well, yeah, if I could turn back time, probably be less selfish and took other, her, her feelings into consideration more. What was a, a old man like Danny? Uh, lovely fella. Yeah. Really lovely fella. I loved him in the business. It's my, probably still, still is my favourite film. Yeah. That, between that and all the Rise of the Foot Soldiers. Blinding. Blinding films. Yeah. Blinding films. Really, really good really films. Really good films, really good films. There was the other one as well where he was in, when he was a younger, it was called... Uh, uh, Human Traffic. Unbelievable. What a film. Unbelievable. <laughs> Which reminds me of me when I was at age. <laughs> With all the, the, the XC pills yeah, in it. Yeah, Unbelievable. It's sick. It's and sick. there's that scene where that guy's trying to light the light and it's doing that for ages. Yeah. And it's just, I, it takes me back when I used to go to after party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like six o'clock in the morning and this is one random geezer. Raves and that, oh. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Sick. Crazy yeah, times. Sick, man. Sick. Um, Right, so I know you kind of answered it, but where where can we expect to see you in the next five or ten years? I Listen, mean, have, have you put anything out there? I know you said about the boxing and getting back onto TV and stuff, but is there any real other goals that you set for the future? You know what? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pursue the acting more. Okay. I really enjoy the acting, so I'm I'm gonna pursue acting, like one hundred percent pursue acting. I've got the right contacts. I've already been in a <coughs> I've already been in a film, so I know how to do it. Obviously, I can hone the skills. Get back into my presenting, get back into my boxing, and get this company up and running. So those four things. Amazing. So my company up and running. What was the other one? Boxing. Get, no, boxing. Be boxing again. Be out there actively boxing. Presenting. Uh, presenting. Did you, did you say acting? I said, did I say acting? I can't remember, but... Them, them four things. Yeah, TV, act, TV acting, uh, boxing, and also your company. Yeah, I'll, I want to start again. So I want, I want to get my company up and running and be in a successful company. I want to definitely pursue the acting career because I really enjoy it and I know I can do it. Um, I want to do my TV presenting again because I love that. Yeah. And 
I want to get my boxing back. I'm going to go back into the ring. I'm going to fight and prove a lot of people wrong. And I'll do all four of them. Cool. I'll, I'll mark my words today. All four of them will happen. And once that all comes good and once everything else starts coming good around that, your life just becomes better. Yeah. I only known you for a short amount of time, but I do honestly say this, that, listen, mate, if you ever need a chat, I'm here. I oh, know, I know. Um, I, I want to be working with you as well, even with Woodbury House and the Richard See, Hamilton well, well, stuff. this is what I was going to say. We, we, we can talk about it another time, but yeah, I, 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 the, the offer still stands. I still want to, I wasn't in the right place, right frame of mind before, but I want to still get involved with Woodbury House and, you know, do bits and pieces, do bits yeah, and pieces, for yeah. sure. We could do some Definitely. projects around the world. Um, this is one last question. Go on. So you kind of answered it earlier without even realising, but right. I've got a mantra, a bit of a catchphrase, and the catchphrase goes like this. Be happy, never content. Now, the reason why I come up with it is when I started my first sales company to get the sales guys going and females... Um, was to uh, give them something they can live live by. It's not like a lifestyle. Mm. I want to ask you, Jack Fincham, what does be happy, never content mean to you? Um, to me, I would say be happy, never content means be in a frame of mind and in a situation that you are happy with and that you feel joyed with rather than just settling for something and going, it ain't bad, it ain't good, but it will do me for now. Lovely stuff. Thanks for your time, mate. No Thanks problem. everyone listening. Anytime. Please uh, share this and... Uh, share it. Share it right now. Now, do it now. Swipe up or something. Give a little comment. Yeah. So, a positive one. Positive. Only positive. Yeah. And um, be happy, never content. Yeah. Nice one, Jack. Friend first, boss second. Probably entertainer third. Leave me hanging. So.